Vicious, ravenous, aggressive, and evil-tempered at all times, the Angry Owl Bear is one of the most iconic Dungeons and Dragons monsters of all time. Probably the crossbred creation of some demented wizard, the Owl Bear is a mix between a giant owl and a bear. It does sound a bit silly as a concept, but it has become a staple of fantasy with games like World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy, EverQuest, and more utilizing it. But now, before we go deeper, let's go ahead and first see what the 5th edition monster manual says about it. As you can see, we do get a full page dedicated to it, and there's quite a lot of paragraphs in here, which is always good when they do this. Starting off, it says that an owlbear's screech echoes through dark valleys and benighted forests piercing the quiet night to announce the death of its prey. I think you guys are gonna get a kick as to which parts are owl and which parts are bear, but yeah, as you can see, the face is basically all owl, so you get the famous owl screech, but this one is particularly loud. Down here, we're told of the owl bear's reputation for ferocity, aggression, stubbornness, and sheer ill temper. It says here that there's nothing an owl bear fears, and that even monsters that outmatch an owl bear in size and strength avoid tangling with it, for this creature cares nothing about a foe's superior strength as it attacks without provocation. Down here we're told it emerges from its den around sunset and hunts into the darkest hours of the night. It screeches to flush out its prey or to search for a mate. It drags partially devoured kills back to its den, storing portions of the carcass among the surrounding rocks, bushes, and trees. The scent attracts scavengers which then become more prey to the owlbear. Although they are more intelligent than most animals, owlbears are difficult to tame. However, with enough time, food, and luck, an intelligent creature can train an owlbear to recognize it as a master, making it an unflinching guard or a fast and hardy mount. Funnily enough, it says that people of remote frontier settlements have even succeeded at raising owlbears, which is awesome. We get more examples down here of just how different people use owlbears after they domesticate them. Some of them use them as pets, whereas others use them to defend their homes. And then lastly, we get an entry as to the origin of the owlbear. It says that scholars have long debated the origins of the creature. The most common theory is that a demented wizard created the first specimen by crossing a giant owl with a bear. However, venerable elves claim to have known these creatures for thousands of years, and some fae insist that owlbears have always existed in the Feywild. We will of course talk a little bit more about this in a bit, but for now, let's move on to the character sheet. They are fairly bulky as you can see, but nothing that a solid veteran couldn't take out on its own. You can see here too that they are very fast, though please note the absent climbing speed. Owlbears are not tree climbers, though we will talk about that later as well. They do have a proficiency in perception, they have dark vision, and they have keen sight and smell. The keen sight and smell, guys, is crucial. Owlbears have some of the best senses in the forest. The way that they are described in the lore leads one to believe that it is typically near impossible to sneak up on them. Remember that having advantage on perception checks means that you get a plus 5 on your passive perception, so the owlbear actually gets an 18 passive perception that relies on sight or smell. That's very important to know. Lastly, we have their attacks, which are just simple claws and beak attacks. But now, without further ado, let's talk about what the monster manual does not tell you about the owlbears. First, let's talk about the one important part that they completely left out in the attacks for the owlbear, and that is their main strategy for actually defeating enemies. Owlbears don't just casually beak at you in the middle of a fight. I mean, that's just kind of silly. What they do is they bear hug you, pushing you deep into his chest, crush your bones, as they beak you in the face to maim you and kill you. See, owlbears actually spend a large portion of the battle standing in two feet. You'll actually notice that a lot of the old official art for the owlbear does have it standing and it is for a good reason. The owlbear uses its considerable weight, 1300 to 1500 pounds of it, to make its claw attack the most powerful that it can be. The owlbear stands upright, then comes down at you with all of its weight to almost punch you with its claws. Most often than not, this single strike will kill a human in a single hit. The monster manual does a good representation of this by having the average damage of the attack be 14, which is more than a normal commoner will have in health. But in cases where that is not enough to kill, it is typically enough to maim. What the owlbear actually wants to do is stun you so that then it can grab you, hug you, and then crush you in its grasp while beaking you in the face. This strategy of grappling was a feature of the owlbear 
there in literally every single edition except 5th edition for some reason. In theory, the owlbear would never beak you unless you were already grappled. Quote, Owl bears, like humans, can rotate their forearms, and this gives them great strength and agility in seizing their prey. It is perhaps this feature alone which gives the owl bear its deadly ability to hug its opponents and allows them to make powerful sight swipes with their wicked claws. End quote. The owl bear is also supposed to have a 120 feet of dark vision, which is what normal owls get, but I mean, that's less important. What I do consider important, though, is the representation of how the creature is supposed to look like, more specifically how the eyes are supposed to look like. The eyes of the owl bear are odd because they have been described throughout the editions in one way, but none of the art has ever shown it to be that way. And now the fifth edition muddles it even further. In fifth edition, the eyes are described as as limpid. It says here, the limpid pupils of its great round eyes stare furiously from its owlish head. So limpid means unclouded slash clear, and the art shows simple crystal black eyes. It's confusing because in the description it says pupils, not the iris nor the entire eye, but then the art shows the entire eye just being pitch black, which doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense based on the description that we're given, but it also doesn't make any sense with the description that we were given on any of the previous editions. In the picture, they make you believe that owl bears just have simple black eyes, but in reality, they do have irises in their eyes, and they are supposed to be red-rimmed. This is described in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd edition. It is annoying though because even though the eyes were described in those editions, their art in those editions also didn't use it, which is just even more confusing. So this is how the eyes of owls actually look like in real life. Owl bears have this type of eye red-rimmed eyes. They are described in the lore as being terrifying, particularly horrifying when seen in the middle of the night. Most of the fan art that you will see around will use the orange or yellow instead, which I believe is just the most common type of eye that you typically see in owls. But it's just weird that 5th edition went with full black and some of the other editions, like 3rd edition, went with full white, which is even more bizarre. Anyways, this is just one of those things that confused me greatly. I, I hate being a hater, but I just wanted to point out those inconsistencies. I know this series can sometimes come across as a 5th edition hate piece, which is definitely not the case, not what I want to do. But this is a great example of all editions just kind of dropping the ball on something. This art is actually probably in my top 5 best art pieces for monsters in the monster manual. I actually love it. The owlbear looks so cool in this art. Even though owlbear are not really purple either, but I'm not going down that road. The lore described them as being brownish black to yellow brown in fur and feathers. Oh, and I should also point out that there is actually bear like fur beneath the feathers, even if they're difficult to see in every single piece of art. The beaks are also generally yellow to ivory, and like I said before, the eyes are red rimmed and, quote, exceedingly terrible to behold, end quote. They're just supposed to look really scary in the eyes, basically. Owl bears speak their own language, which is how the 5th edition monster manual describe them, they are very loud screeches of varying length and pitch that they use to communicate mostly to find mates in the forest. Now the mating situation of owlbears is interesting because now we're entering into the part of how much of the owlbear is bear and how much is owl. Even though the backside of the owlbear is all bear, you'll be surprised to know that they actually don't deliver live babies. Instead, owlbears hatch from eggs, which is something that Monster Manual completely omitted and I'm sure you'd be delighted to know. Going even farther, owl bears have no nipples, unlike real female bears, which obviously do. In real life, baby bears receive milk from their moms, but not owl bears. From birth, owl bears are full-blown carnivores and will need to receive chunks of fresh meat from their parents from the moment that they are born. Surprisingly, these guys take much more from owls than they do from bears. Quote, owl bear eggs are near perfect spheres. There will be from one to six eggs in a clutch. The eggs are laid several days apart. The young will be raised by the mother for the first two years, during which time she will teach the cub how to hunt for themselves. 
After the end of the second year, the cops will go off on their own and stake out their own territory." End quote. The Monster Manual did talk about the art of domesticating owlbears, but they didn't mention how expensive it is to do that. Because of how useful a domesticated owlbear is, the eggs are worth quite a fortune. A single owlbear egg is worth from 2,000 to 3,000 gold pieces, whereas the baby owlbear of less than a year old fetches for almost 5,000 gold pieces in the open market. And that is just to get the specimen. The training itself goes for another 2,000 gold pieces, and that's because of how difficult it is to actually tame an owlbear. We actually got the difficulty challenge in 3rd edition. The DC to train a young owlbear is 23. You need to pass a check of 23 in order to succeed at training it. And that is why they charge so much, because it's just really difficult. And the reason that you need a baby owlbear in order to even try is because attempting to train an adult increases the DC to 30, which according to the DMG, that number is considered an impossible task. Now, owlbears have a lifespan of about 20 years. They prey on anything from rabbits to bears to trolls to snakes and reptiles, anything that is alive and edible, they will try and kill and eat. Like the Monster Manual described them, if they see a prey, they go for the prey. Quote, an owlbear's main weakness is also its greatest strength, its ferocity. Because owlbears are so bad-tempered, they stop at nothing to kill a target. It is not difficult to trick an owlbear into hurling itself off a cliff or into a trap, provided you can find one." End quote. As a hybrid of two different animals, one diurnal and the other nocturnal, they have an unusual active time. The Muster Manual described that they typically leave their caves at sunset, but generally speaking, they're already active way before then. The general active period of an owlbear starts with them waking up at midday. They try and then hunt day animals during the day, and then at night, they hunt night animals before falling asleep roughly around midnight. One factor that they take from their bear side and not their owl side is that they are only active during the summer and they hibernate during the winter, which is something that owls typically don't do. Owls are generally active all around the year. Now, there is, however, a completely distinct winter species of owl bears, a combination of a polar bear and winter owls, like the great gray owl, which is considered to be the largest species of owl in the world. Not much is known about this particular species of winter owl bear, but its existence was a Looted in both the second edition Monster Manual and in Dragon Magazine number 214. Now, for the longest time, this mysterious winter species of owlbear was supposed to be this thing that people knew existed, but nobody had ever been able to confirm it. And now, finally, though, it seems that we might actually see one in the next adventure for 5th edition, so that's gonna be exciting. Now, you'll be surprised to know that there is also a winged variation of the owlbear, though much like the polar owlbear, uh, this one is not really seen very often. Though, interestingly enough, we do have official stats for it. It's here on the screen if you want to see it. Another thing that the Monster Manual omitted, which I personally think it's awesome as hell and makes the creature so much cooler, even if, even if it's a bit silly, is the fact that just like owls can, an owlbear can rotate its head all the way around to its back so that it can see behind itself. An owlbear can turn its head a full 270 degrees versus a human's 180. This is done thanks to the fact that the creature has twice as many neck bones as does a human. They can also snap its neck from one position to another almost instantaneously. See, the reason that this is necessary for the owlbear is because an owlbear can't actually move its eyes at all. A human can look around by moving its eyes without necessarily moving its head. An owlbear actually can't do that. Their eyes are static and always looking forward, so they have to move their head in order to be able to see. Further, the eyes of the owlbear are protected in ways that a human's eye is not. Quote, owlbears have a transparent third eyelid, also called a nictitating membrane, that they can flip across their eyes at will. This protects their sensitive eyes from dust, grit, and the light. And it also protects them from strong light. Light spells are therefore ineffectual as blinding attacks against an owlbear, end quote. I described it before how the owlbear has the eyes of an owl, which are already incredible, but they also have the keen senses of both the bear and the owl, granting quadruple normal hearing. Quote, 
In fact, the owlbear's hearing is so finely developed that it can attack normally in total darkness and similarly can attack invisible creatures without penalty. Of course, it can be nullified with a silence spell." End quote. So acute is the owlbear's sense of hearing that even in melee, it's almost impossible to sneak up on one. Owlbear's ears are somewhat unique in that they are asymmetrical. One ear is higher than the other, and this makes it extremely efficient in pinpointing exactly where a particular sound is coming from. Quote, this fact has no doubt proven to be very unnerving to many a thief who tried using his ability to move silently to move past an owlbear." End quote. This is what makes encountering an owlbear to be so problematic. Sneaking is typically not an option because of their insane senses, and running away is also typically not advisable because of how fast they are. This is why it is common knowledge amongst townsfolk and rangers that the best way to avoid one is to climb a tree. Because of how massive owl bears are, they're not good tree climbers. Though you have to make sure that you pick a tree sturdy enough that the creature can't just tear it down, which is definitely something that it can do thanks to its obnoxiously strong strength. Because owlbears are so temperamental and stubborn though, they will simply wait you out. You will never see an owlbear simply get bored and leave. If they have to, they will just try and claw out the tree for hours until the tree falls or until something else pisses it off more than you. This is why avoiding owlbear territories is crucial for the survival of the members of a community, and typically there are two ways to tell that you are in one. The first one is by finding scratches on trees. The creatures claw at selected trees with their front paws in order to keep their claws sharp and to mark off their territory. The other way is to find what we call owlbear pellets. See, the mouth of an owlbear is basically owl, as you can see, so the way that they eat is very owl-like. Owlbears tear their food into chunks and then swallow those chunks whole, because they obviously can't chew their food without teeth. This means that their stomach is also more owl than bear. What happens here is that the non-meat that enters their stomach cannot be fully digested. Things like bones, fur, feathers, and insect shells will instead sit in their stomach. These undigested objects will then be churned into circular pellets and regurgitated by the beast. Generally speaking, this is done in and around the lair, so if you see these pellets on the floor, then you know that you're very close to the lair of the owlbear and should probably walk the other direction. Now, in the owlbear's body, the one thing that is still very much bear is the massive tongue of the creature. Owlbears use this long tongue to fetch honey, just how real bears do, and they are protected from the stings of the bees by their thick coating of feather and fur. This is the only non-carnivorous thing that they actually do eat, and is one of the few things in their body that is is basically bear, because most of their bodies is owl. <laughs> Lastly, you should also know if you intend on hunting an owl bear that because of their rugged constitution and their combat rage, they have something very similar to what the barbarian has, where the owl bear can actually keep on fighting even if it has reached zero hit points, simply because its rage keeps it going. Too stubborn to simply die, I suppose. They can last from one to four rounds chugging along before they actually perish. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I apologize if I sound different. My voice is completely shot. I've been sick all week. Um, just been kind of dealing with this cold. So, uh, you know, I apologize for that if it was very noticeable. But in any case, I would like to personally thank my patron supporters, Sack Bowel, Rocato Fan, Barry Mascant, 5e Magic Shop, Daniel Umar, Rusty Rain, Biotechnofrag, Daniel Luna, Doc Feeder, Brat Salazar, Terry Culp, The Great Codini, Walker Motley, Omega Scales, Karathas the Bulwark, Ziran King, Ozol, Ariel Nelson, Alex Cookson, Griffin Pierce, Falky951, Benjamin Bosters, Mr. Salty, Thomas Hunt, Drayden, Tesla Coil, The Role Playing Junkies Podcast, Silent Chopper, Prince Daylight Morning Crown, Jericho Darkstar, Sabine Kurshav, Troll Skull Dude, Solarensis, William Sladden, Nathan McComb, Bushido Burrito, AJ Dare Music, Soulless Rider, Tactical Tokens, Roleplay with Advantage, Tom, Blake Ash, Stalia, Items to Astound on DM's Guild, Samuel King, and Lost Crusader for supporting me on Patreon at the $25 level. If you would like to support me as well, then please head on over to patreon.com slash Mr. Rex to support. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm currently in the process of moving 
moving, so I might not have a video for next week. We'll see. I'll try and make one if I have internet on the new place, but you know how those things go. I might not get internet for a little bit, so if I don't upload something, I apologize for that. In the meantime, um, if you guys are on the $10 Patreon or higher, I'm gonna have a poll over on Patreon so that you guys can vote on what my next video is going to be, so if you guys are on that Patreon, uh, in any of that range, make sure to go over and check out the poll and, and decide what we're gonna do. But with that said, thank you guys so much for watching, for liking, for commenting, and for just generally being here. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.